A lot of people think that, well, they read the script and they really liked it. That's meaningless. It's like, did they buy it? No. What do you say to screenwriters mm -hmm. who say it's not their job to get the movie made, mm. it's simply their job to write the script, have an idea, and get that out there? Well, I, also, I when people tell me they want to write a script, I say to them, do you want to write a script or do you want to make a movie? Because they're two very different things. And uh, early in my career, I was friends with Charles Joffe, who was Woody Allen's agent and then his producer. And I said, Charlie, in film and TV, where's the power? He said, in television, it's the writer, producer, hyphenate, ideally the writer, executive producer, hyphenate, the showrunner. Uh, in films, it's generally the writer, director, hyphenate, uh, sometimes a producer, but often the writer, director. And, and that told me where to go in my career. I went into television because writers run television. And so that meant that what I wrote would get made, what I wrote would get on the screen. Uh, I'd say 90, 95% of what I've written has been shot. And my friends who are screenwriters have lives of endlessly writing scripts for these other people who may or may not be uh, unstable, but most of their work doesn't get made. And that I know screenwriters who've worked for decades and none of their, they've earned a good living and none of their work has gotten shot. For me, that would be a useless life because my goal is to create a body of work that moves an audience, that entertains an audience, that is meaningful to them. And uh, so you have to know what, what you're trying to accomplish. So if a screenwriter wants to be a screenwriter, doesn't want to be a director, doesn't want to be a producer, then yes, they can write scripts, but those scripts may not sell, or if they sell, they may not get made the way you wanted them to get made, or you may get fired, or they may, be, they may sell and, be, and never get made. So yeah, if your goal is to make a living as a writer, there are a lot of different ways to do that, uh, or as an actor, or as a director, or as a producer. But the more you say, let's chart a path that gets my work made and gets me an income, then that's a strategy that allows you to be much more effective. And, uh, and I'm not saying not to have a career as a screenwriter. I have friends who've made millions and millions of dollars uh, as uh, screenwriters, and they've had some great films made. Um, but you're a little more thrown to the, f the winds of fate in that direction. So, so one thing I would say to anybody who wants to be a screenwriter is uh, get, get mentors who are successful screenwriters because you must know what the rules are because they don't tell you what the rules are, generally. And unless you know what the rules are, unless you know the secret language, you will endlessly be frustrated. And the secret language, it, we all learn it because in order to be successful, you have to know what, like when you're in a room pitching, you have to be able to read the room. And it was, it's very funny because I once, Elaine and I once went in and pitched something uh, with someone who was in fair, fairly uh, new to the business. And at the end of the meeting, he came out saying, well, um, why didn't you say this and this and this? And I said, because we were saying it, but just not in words. We knew, you know, the person I was pitching to knew that that was under everything we were saying. And, you know, and, and you also know what's a yes, what's a no. You know where you have enthusiasm, where you don't. Um, there's, there's a lot of ways to read that stuff. And, and many of the lessons, many people are very frustrated because they think they're succeeding when they're not because people in Hollywood will act like they're enthusiastic. They'll love your script, they'll love your idea, and then suddenly they seem to blow hot and cold, you know. And it's because a lot of people want to be liked, but the moment you're out of their sight, they forget about you and it's on to the next thing. And so you can never trust their word. And um, so again, that's why you don't want to... A lot of people think that, well, they read the script and they really liked it. That's meaningless. It's like, did they buy it? No, uh, but, they, but they want me to come in again and pitch again. Okay, well, that's not bad. But again, it's sort of like they really liked it, but they didn't buy it. Or they, you know, they, when you go to an audition, an audition and they say, well, um, that was great, but, you know, thanks. But if they bring you back, yes, then you are making an impact. But you have to really look at what, at cause and effect. Because there are a lot of things that people feel are symbolic victories that are actually not moving them forward. And a real victory is, when something gets sold, when something gets made, when, you know, and when they hire you to do the next one. You, know, it's, you can build upon success. If you're consistently not succeeding, then you really have to look at what's not working and find out why it's not working. But again, you need to have people who will tell you the truth 
but be supportive. No one has a right to say to anybody, you'll never make it. No one has the right to say to anybody, you don't have ability, you're not, you're not good enough. These are irrelevancies. The people who succeed in this business are the ones who are incredibly persistent. Uh, my friend Nicholas Meyer, who directed Wrath of Khan, he said, uh, the key to success in Hollywood is persistence with charm. <laughs> because you need the persistence to get where you're going, and the charm means that they won't get pissed off at you. <laughs> but, um, but again, I know so many people who think, it's like, well, I've written 10 scripts and none of them have sold. Well, you might try something that, you know, I mean, again, if, like, like often people come to my round table and they've made like 10 shorts or 15 shorts. And I say to them, stop making shorts, make a feature because you can't, you can't really make a living doing shorts as far as I know. But if you take several shorts and link them thematically, that can be put together into a feature. So you can do an ensemble film made up of shorts if they're linked by a character or a theme. Uh, or, or any number of things, or a location. And so start thinking that way because if a feature is too big to do in one gulp, you might over the course of a year be able to make three or four shorts, put them together as a feature, and bang, you're good to go. And so I, I think one really has to look at where one's headed. And I think the keys to succeeding are you have to write from the heart, learn your craft, so that means either, that doesn't mean go to, go to college necessarily in screenwriting, but it does mean read scripts, see why they work, see what works and what doesn't. Be in writers groups where you get feedback, but it has to be supportive. That doesn't mean it's not critical, but there's a lot of toxicity. You don't want um, toxic notes because they don't help you. They just put scars on your heart, you know, and uh, find mentors who do, who, who, whose work you love who have and who, who are authentic. Because again, as I've said before, there are two Hollywoods. There's a Hollywood of creepy, horrible people. And then there's a Hollywood of people who are doing the work they love. They stand by their word. They're good family people and, and they're good friends to, and they're, they're authentic. And that's the Hollywood you wanna be part of. That's the Hollywood you yourself wanna represent. Uh, you do not have to become a slime ball to make it in Hollywood. That is, there are many, many bad habits that people have. You do not have to A, become something you loathe, and B, I strongly urge people to avoid working with people they loathe. You will not just have one chance. I mean, if, you're, if you really put your heart and soul and a work ethic into, the, into pursuing this, you'll find opportunities. You'll make opportunities. Um, you don't have to be... The, at the whim of someone crazy, and nor should you be. And, uh, but you also have to decide from the beginning if you need to be rich, because if you need to be a millionaire, then yes, the studios and the networks are the, are the, the road to take if you can. If you don't need to be rich, well then there's a million ways to earn money, writing books, writing scripts, you can make uh, films that, that earn, some money, earn some money back, you can have your own YouTube channel that brings in money from ad revenue, you, there's a lot of ways, to, the Patreon accounts. I mean, I know people who are, who are, their art is being supported by their Patreon accounts. And, uh, you know, it's just, you, you, you need to talk to people who are succeeding in the way you want to succeed and say, you don't ask them for help. You don't say, get me an agent or, or, or open this door for me or, or introduce me to your friends. No, you ask advice and, and you say, how did you do this? Or what, what, when, you, when this happened, what did, what, what did you do? And, and sometimes they'll give you answers that you can apply, and sometimes they'll give you answers that, that you can't apply. If you can't apply it, then keep asking the question of different successful people until you find the answer that you can apply. And, uh, and you know, but there, there are many different paths to success, and, uh, and it's just, man, you know, Rod Serling used to say, I, when, he, when he would write scripts, he would say, is this the truth as I know it, or better yet, the truth as I feel it? And that's, words of wisdom. Let's take another scenario, and sure. that is someone's written what they think is an amazing script, mm -hmm. it's been purchased, and too many hands got involved and, quote, messed it up. Yes, and that happens often. In fact, I know some uh, writing team where they wrote a horror script that they were very proud of, and it got went through all these different writers, and they were very worried about that, and finally the Writers Guild decided that they would have solo writing credit, but then when the movie came out, it was really terrible because of all the rewrites, and they were blamed <laughs> because theirs was the only name on it. And so, you know, that's where I say, if you're willing to take power, if you're willing to take responsibility, if you say, I'm gonna write and produce and direct, <clears throat> that doesn't mean you do it alone. You're not a one-man band, 
but it means that you make sure that what you intended it to be is what it is, you know. Because the moment you sell a script, then the moment you sell a script, you're at, you're no longer the boss. The, the moment you sell a script, you're no longer, you no longer have power. Whoever bought it has power. And so it can be any number of things. Anything can happen to it. It's like putting Moses in the, in the little reed basket and floating him down the Nile. You know, it's like, bye kid. <laughs> I mean, will you become, the, you know, Moses or will you become Pharaoh or will you become like, you know, Joe who uh, you know, shines the statues? You know, it, it, you, there's, you have no power over that anymore because you floated him away. That's like what people do with scripts. Um, and so, you know, when I was a writer on staff, a writer, producer, story editor, uh, one of the things I would say at the beginning of my job is I would say, my preference is that I not be rewritten by others. I will do as many drafts as it takes, but um, I prefer that my, my work is what gets to the audience. And because I was a hard worker and a good writer, um, my bosses honored that. And it was very rare that I would get rewritten. And uh, so, you know, it's, uh, you know, you, you, you work harder, but you... Um, have less sleepless nights, you know. So, uh, but again, it's it's so easy to shoot stuff now. It's so, you know. I mean, everywhere I turn, you know, I see people shooting short films or what or features or whatever t web series, TV shows. You know, it's science fiction never predicted that we would all have video cameras in our pockets, and there's so many benefits of that. And you know, fear can stop you. Laziness can stop you. You really have to say to yourself, if I have to work hard, it's worth it. Because I want, I want people to know what I'm doing. I want to share this with the world. It has to be that. Because otherwise, if you're going to be half-assed about something, then go work at McDonald's. You know, because if the fries are not the best fries ever made, then it's okay. But if you're going to make movies or TV shows, then then step up. There's only when, when you when you encounter resistance or adversity, you can either step back or you can, or you can step up. And that's it. That's, those are the only two choices. And uh, if you step back, you'll never know what would have happened if you had just really put your shoulder to the wheel. So, you know, I, my, my career has been made by hand, and I'm very proud of that.